My name is Chris Lee. I farm in southern Manitoba in Pepinac Valley, which is south of Manitou. I'm an ordained locally ordained priest, and uh, so I do uh, preach Anglicanism. We have got involved with this Girl Hope project uh, in 2019, and we uh, it was a good connection for us to get to know the people in Winnipeg and, and as an Anglican community to, to work together. So that's what's kind of been, got me started with this. Today was such an exciting day. Um, Mary came from Kenya and to, to see our farm and she shared her stories about what aid that we've helped her with uh, do, the good things. See the seed comes and then goes and then it drops into this hole right here. So that's where you get the six inch spacing. Oh yeah, and then the seed goes in these little hoppers here. And this will do it. You fill up the hoppers, you can do 40 yeah. all, all of them, yeah, do 40 It was a great experience to be able to talk individually with Mary and show her our farm operation. And so, and we compared about what their farming culture was over, over in Kenya and how different it is, but it, it's all. We're all working towards the same goal to helping each other and, and helping people out of poverty. This work is very important to me. Um, firstly, I feel privileged that we had the opportunity or the gift to be born and raised in Canada. We have so much here. We have so much to be thankful for and so many riches that I think it's time that we share our treasures and resources with other people less fortunate. And I, and I hope that we can give them a hand up and, and, um, and hopefully they have a better lifestyle from the little bit, the partnership that we do with them. The person in North Dog. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Dear God, Thank you for giving us such a blessing to have Mary and the representatives of PWRDF here to see our humble works and our humble home. And, uh, and thank you for letting us share our experiences with each other. And let us thank you for the food that we're about to receive. And God's blessings. Amen. Amen. Okay. Oh, okay. We could do it that way. usual place. Sure. I don't even remember. Just after mine. Is that okay? Yeah, I called it up. Everything was Bring my greeting from Kenya to the family and also share. Maybe first and foremost, I just want to thank you so much for welcoming all of us here and laying the table for us. And I think you have laid this table for us today here when I started eating. It symbolizes that uh, you're not just laying the table here, especially the people who support Canadian Foods Grants Bank and uh, PWRDF. You are helping us to lay tables for many families in Africa. And we just want to say thank you. Mm -hmm. In Africa, when I was growing up, when I was young, we used to have like drought after every 10 years. Actually, like our mothers knew that every year that ends with four is likely to be famine. Mm. and very intelligent mothers would store food. Mm -hmm. So 1974, there was farmer, mm. 74, 84, 94, 2004. It was, it was obvious that food production would go down because there's a drought mm. and food had reduced. Mm. So getting into the year 2000, that started to be more frequent from the 10 year cycle to five. And then as we got into around 2018, then it went to two years. So we are experiencing the worst drought in the whole of Africa in 40 years. Yeah. And we're talking about huge numbers of people because in Kenya, Ethiopia, that cuts across Kenya, Ethiopia and Somalia. We are looking at about 31 million people 
And many times I tell people that when uh, you talk about the numbers, it's very easy to dismiss them as statistics or numbers. But if you put people's faces on it, then it makes a lot of sense. And for that reason, we, we are very, very grateful for the support of Canadian farmers and especially the funds that came through from uh, uh, Canadian Foods Grants Bank, CFDB, and also got funding from the, the Humanitarian Coalition of Canada. Mm -hmm. With that money, I think we have received about $4 million Canadian dollars, and we have been able to feed 13,000 households, giving them monthly food ration for all that time, and uh, that is life-saving. It's life-saving because without it, then we'll be talking about something else. Like in Somalia, Somalia we already have people dying from hunger. I'm Fred Weeb. I'm a mid-50s farmer from Starbuck, Manitoba, just west of Winnipeg, Manitoba. And yeah, involved in the Grow Hope project the, through Food Grains and the Anglican Church, I guess. And yeah, started that last year. So we're rolling along this year again. Uh, today we met Mary. She's from Kenya. And so kind of put a face to what we're doing, if that makes sense. And she told us stories of how the help is helping the Africans and there's always more need there so it's good to hear that and good to see that our, we're making an impact. Um, it started with Gordon Jansen. I had met him somewhere and just talked about maybe getting another project going for a food grains grow project. There's been some in the area here. I think there's enough resources to do more than what was being done in the area so I figured let's see if there's another need or cause and then he, he approached me with this request from the Anglican Church because I mean there weren't a lot there was a Winnipeg based church I believe that wanted to start this project I believe in Christian response to hunger and that's what food greens is um, so it's a fit I'm very you can give money you can and give time but I mean this really I love farming so to be able to do something connected to a charity with your farm and it's really practical and you're growing crops so you're doing all the things you love doing and it's going to a great cause that's that's what the connection really feels up that's what's really important to me is that I can connect what I love doing with a very worthy cause a simple cause feeding the hungry we have a project that is funded by PWRDF and Canadian Foods Grants Bank to provide them with food. And actually we do food distribution every month since January 2022. Just to make sure that people are not starving and people are not dying from hunger. Yeah, so we are providing food. I think at this particular point we have reached to about 13,000 households. 13,000? Yes. Uh -huh. We who, who uh, total to about 81,000 people and we give them food ration every month from the money that comes from your farm. So <laughs> we are happy that uh, the weather is not so bad here. So as you work hard, you're actually supporting a family in, in Kenya or families in Kenya and in other places just to get food to eat. Your support actually has really, really been of great help, especially at this time because I think if we are not given these people, this food, would be having families that people have died. Like in Somalia, people are dying from hunger, as we speak, especially children under five and older people. Traveled across Canada, I had an opportunity to go to Alberta and then to Saskatchewan, and I've met a number of farmers. And I've learned one thing that I'm going to tell my people, and especially the people who are receiving the food from, from you guys. One thing I've learned that farmers here really work hard. Really hard. So I really, I really, I really appreciate because when we are down there and we look at the Western world, we think that things come very easily. But the experience I've gotten is that it comes after really hard work. So thank you so much. Keep the hard work, <laughs> we'll keep connecting and we'll keep serving people. Thank you. Yes. In, in Kenya we say Asante Sana. Thank you so much.